We now consider the problem of evaluating definite integrals. So integrals where the limits of integration are there or where we expect to get a single value back, the area under a graph analogy of this function over the range of x of 0 to pi over 2 in this example. There are going to be two ways we can handle the addition or the inclusion of limits of integration. And one is to do what we might naively do, which is make our substitution and, sorry, the second one's the more naive one. Uh, we do the integration and then we keep the limits explicitly in terms of x because remember these are x values. And then once we go back to x's, then we can plug in. Again, what we're thinking here is this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know once we found the antiderivative, the last step is to plug in the upper and lower limits into that antiderivative and subtract. Now, the issue with uh, this is it might be a bit longer. There is a bit of a shortcut, and that's this first method here. When we create our substitution, we can convert both the variables x, so in the last example we had cos of x as our choice, and we can also change the limits. This is an x value, we can convert it to a w value. All of this is easier to understand in context of an example, so let's take a look at that. All right, so we have the integral from the last page. Notice it's not quite the same as the last example. There we had a cos squared, here it's just a cosine. So a natural substitution here might be w equals 1 plus cos of x. That's a nice choice because it includes the whole denominator and it also, when we differentiate it, we'll get a sign. We'll be dividing by sine and canceling the sign out in the top. So we're going to choose w equal 1 plus cos x. The derivative of that is negative sine of x. And that means that our dx and dw are related through this equation. dx is dw with a negative 1 over sine x out front. We'll need that, and we'll need that. Next step. Well, we also are going to have these limits of integration, and those will also be converted in this approach. So we're going to note that when x equals a, or sorry, when x, x equals 0, when x equals 0, w is equal to 1 plus cos of x. Well, cos of 0 in this case. And that's 1 plus cos of 0 is 1. That's 2. Okay. The upper limit, x equals pi over 2, when we have that x value, our w will reach 1 plus cos of pi over 2. And that is 0, so it's 1 plus 0. And the total there is just 1. So our integration is from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2 to start with, or from w equals 2, bring that, to w equals 1. And we'll actually see something interesting happen there. Let's see how we can convert our whole integral. x equals 0, x equals pi over 2, sine of x over 1 plus cos of x, dx, that gets converted to, let's do the inside first, sine of x we didn't have a change for, but 1 plus cos of x, oh, the whole entire denominator was w, so 1 plus cos x is w, and the dx is negative 1 over sine of x dw. And the important conversion, because it's a definite integral this time, is that our limits of integration the 0 converted to w equals 2, and the x equals pi over 2 converted to a w equals 1. And you notice what we see here. This is the opposite order of what we'd usually do, so it's handy that we have rules that would let us flip this if we wanted. For now, we're just going to keep it as is and just apply the second, or apply the fundamental theorem of calculus straight up. But if we wanted to, we could flip this order of integration and get another ne negative sign if we liked. DW. All right, so the signs canceled. 
we have a negative out front, we have 1 over w left, and now we can integrate. We have a classic ln of the absolute value of w between w equals 2 and w equals 1, and there is a negative sign out front, so we keep that. And then we can evaluate. We're going to have negative the ln of 1, absolute value of 1, or 1 is the same thing, minus the ln of 2. And ln of 1 is just 0, and ln of 2 we can't do much about, but this whole thing ends up being positive. So ln of 2. This definite integral evaluates exactly to ln of 2. All right. Notice we didn't need the plus c this time because if we had included the plus c, we would have a plus c and then a minus c that would cancel anyway. With the definite integrals, with limits of integration, we don't need to include that in our antiderivative. Okay, so just to note this, the uh, strategy or the steps here, the substitution was exactly the same process as before. The only difference this time was we said if we have x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2, we can rewrite that in terms of the new variable w that we chose. So we use this formula to convert the x's to w values. And then we simply and carefully replaced the x equals 0 with its w, its corresponding w value. And the same thing with x equals pi over 2. Let's do it with a different integral and using a different approach. Here we have another substitution type integral where we see one function inside another, one, the inside function being 1 plus root x, and its derivative, basically 1 over root x, also being present. So that lets us, or gives us the idea to choose w equals 1 plus root x as our substitution. If we do that, then our derivative dw dx is 1 half 1 over root x, or x to the negative 1 half, and that can be rewritten as 2 root x dw equals dx. So we're going to do the same substitution as usual, and we're actually going to keep these limits of integration around, but we're going to explicitly mark them as x's. So let's see how that works. Integral from 9 to 64 and I'm going to mention these explicitly as x values. And we have the square root of 1 plus root x over root x dx. That's our original. Now we include our substitution, keeping the limits the same, but being explicit that these are x values. As we'll see, that will be important in a second. We have the square root of w over root x. That part was w. Sorry, that part was w. We keep the root x. And then the dx becomes 2 root x dw. That allows us to do the cancellation we were hoping for, and so we can rewrite our integral as 2 times the integral from x equals 9 to x equals 64 of root w dw. Now here's why it's important to have the x equals here. Our variable of integration is w, because the dw at the end here says we're taking small units of delta w and adding them up. And if we didn't explicitly say x equals 64 here, the natural assumption would be that these were w values. Well, w and x are definitely not the same thing, so we should differentiate uh, between the w and x variables in the limits and in the integration. Once we get to this stage, the integration is fairly straightforward. We can do the antiderivative. We have a 2 out front, and then we have w to the 1 half, which becomes w to the 3 halves when we integrate over the new integral. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Remind ourselves that the limits of integration are still x's. But then we can go back to x's, and then we can actually evaluate our integral. So we'll have 2 times. Uh, the two-thirds, that's the 1 over 3 halves, and w was 1 plus root x, and that is going to be evaluated between x equals 64 and 9, and now everything's ready. We've got x and x, x in our limits, x in our function, now we can sub in. 
All right, so we'll have 4 thirds all times 1 plus the root of 64 to the 3 halves minus 1 plus the square root of 9 to the 3 halves. That looks good. So we'll have 4 thirds. The square root of 64 is 8. So this whole thing in here is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Sorry, yeah, square root of 9 is 3. So we'll have 1 plus 3, that's 4. And then we do the root and then the third power. Square root is 3, cubed is 27. Square root of 4 is 2. Cube that, and we get 8. And at the end of the day, that's going to give us 4 thirds times 19. And that is better known as almost 60, 56 thirds as our final value, I believe. Nope, 76 thirds. And that would be another way to do a substitution integral. So choosing a new variable and not worrying too much about the limits of integration until the very last step. So we do a standard everything normal until we get back to x's and then we sub in the upper and lower x values from the integral. If you do do that and you, you're writing out the limits as you go, just be careful to explicitly remind yourself that the limits started as x values and should only be considered x values and not w's.